Alrighty, so let's talk a little bit about manifestation, law of attraction, and what what's actually going on at your mental level and how it precipitates down from the universe. All right. One thing that I recently learned is like, you know, I've been talking about this type of stuff for a long time, but uh, there's always something to learn. And one of the biggest things that I've learned is like in the umbrella term for the law of attraction manifestation is mental magic. Now that really like resonated with me, you know, mental magic made sense to me because it's like, there's a whole bunch of walks of life, but they need tools. They need the proper herbs. They need the proper mixtures. They need the proper everything for things to go. They need the proper stones, crystals, runes. They need other things other than their mind to get something going. Once again, do you. Some of y'all can body me in the spiritual competition. You know what I'm saying? Like we got put into like an anime showdown. I would drop really quickly because I'm over here trying to like mental something. You just be like, one second, dead. <laughs> but, you know, what I'm saying here is... You know, I, I value having all the power within me. You know what I'm saying? And wherever I go, if I get dropped down in the middle of a desert right now and I have my mental magic, well, the power comes out of me. You see what I'm saying? I don't need tools. I don't, man, I can't do this. I don't have my, 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 my mixing bowl. I don't have this and that. I always have all the tools I need within me. So that's why mental magic was something that was very important to me. And that's why I was just like, oh, I like that. But not only that, like not only me hearing that umbrella term for it, it was the fact that in my journey, I started off with manifestation, law of attraction, manifestation via angel numbers, uh, numerology and seeing the signs after I started manifesting and scripting. You know, I used to start off with scripting in my angel book and like to say, hey, angels, uh, help me out with this. Get me this, blah, 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 blah. And all these things happen. You see what I'm saying? But the thing is, is I returned to it. So I started off with it and I went on my whole journey. You know, learning all these different walks of life, blah, 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 learn this, learn these rituals, learn these dances, learn this type of stuff. And they never really connected with me, but all of them were adding certain pieces that I needed. So when I returned, like in the last like year or so, when I returned like really heavy back into the law of attraction, it was like, oh, I had to go full circle. You started here. Hey, welcome class. This is law of attraction. Now we're going to go through this whole journey, never talk about it for a long period of time and then come back to it. You see what I'm saying? And that whole journey, you were getting new bits and pieces that you can bring on to your elementary understanding of that initial subject. So for me, it was law of attraction, right? Before, like I started to nosedive right back into law of attraction, um, I really, uh, I stopped, my last main stop was alchemy. And it was a very quick stop, but it was a very big pivotal moment because I got two main principles from it. You know, like a lot of people, they, they mix in, they got the symbols going, they know how to do all this type of stuff. Cool, more power to you. You know what I'm saying? But for me, I got two main principles and they're very simple. You don't even need to be in alchemy to know them. Number one, turning lead into gold. Turning lead into gold is a lot more than turning, you know, your number number two pencil into a gold necklace and so you can go be a rapper or something like that. It's a lot more than that. You know, it's more it's more so turning that low vibratory heavy stuff that you are holding into your mind and you understand that in, within your mind, you take in this negativity and in your mind, in your essence, you transmute it into something of a high vibratory state, the gold, AKA the food of the gods. This is the stuff that they feed, all, feed off of. And if you can create that in your own body, psh, what does that make you? You see what I'm saying? You know, you are what you eat. If the gods eat, eat gold and you can make the gold and you are the gold, hey, you the food of the gods. You are thus becoming a god. You see what I'm saying? Because you start to make your own source of gold. Every like people, especially like content creators, um, musicians, artists, all that type of stuff where your work is open to criticism. It's like a lot of people, the brain, the human brain is very geared to focus on the negative. You can get 1,000 positive comments. You'll see once, oh, this song is terrible. This video is terrible. And you'll just be like, but, but, but why? What, what is it that I could do to make it better? When 999 other people said that you were the best, you just, you're, you're, the brain is going to focus on one. What you need to do is turn that negativity into something positive. You can make a whole song off of it. You can draw a whole piece of art. You make a tapestry, you make a canvas out of that type of stuff. And that's what alchemy taught me. So when I got back into mental magic, all that whole journey like got me back into my initial subject matter with a full sense of confidence. Like, wait, I can apply all these different principles to what I know. What, what I started off knowing, and now I'm like, wait a minute, from that, from shamanism, I learned this. From um from like even like dark magic, I learned this. From alchemy, I learned this. And I can all bring it back into my subject matter, which is mental magic, right? So if you're watching my video, you're very much interested in this type of stuff. 
So one thing I want you to understand is your mind is your creative space. In your mind, you can create anything. In your mind, you close your eyes right now, you can see whatever you want. You know, I can visualize my room right now. That's cool. Or I can visualize the room that I'm going to be living in in the future. You see what I'm saying? Because think about it like this. I'm going I'm to try to give you a whole bunch of different ways to, art, uh, to, to, to put this in your mind if you're struggling with the manifestation, right? So projecting your future, the things that you want to manifest in your life, those are indeed in your future, right? So you're going to be like, okay, let's see. I want, let's just say like I want to manifest some water, right? What I'm going to do is like I'm going to see not just me receiving the water, but I'm going to see my water gallon halfway full, which means that I already drank half of it. That means I already have it. You have to make a scene in your mind that implies that you already have what it is that you want. You can be getting the water, sure, 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 but what, what's more powerful? You receiving the water and you can see it in your hand or you already drank half of it. You see what I'm saying? Which one is more powerful, right? So like what you're doing is you're seeing something in the future. I'm going to receive this now. It's coming into my life as I speak. It's pretty much like this. Like if you have this up on your on your video, like any YouTube video that you have up, go put your cursor like on the little the little like the time bar at the bottom and hold your mouse like if it's a 20 minute video, go hold your mouse at 10 minutes, right? Start the video and hold it at 10 minutes. Eventually the bar is going to fill up to that point. That's exactly what you're doing. You're setting points in your in your timeline. So you be like, okay, boom. Like listen, even if you have like a 1 year plan, 1 hour plan, you put it ahead of you. And eventually, time always moves forward. So what's going to happen? Eventually, you're going to get to that point. You see what I'm saying? That's one way to think about it. Another way to think about it is like a snow globe, right? And this is like the next very important piece of mental magic, emotion, right? So a lot of you can do a whole bunch of mental magic. You can, you can picture things all day. I see, I see a dragon. I see me flying in the clouds. I see this and that. I see mansions. I see money raining on me. You see all this type of stuff. But all you're doing is picturing it. The big key, the big ignition switch for it is emotion. You know, I'm not saying don't get emotionally attached. That's the difference too. The small little nuances that can mess you up. It's not just your emotional attachment. Don't do that. You're fueling it. Be like, yo, I feel this. This feels natural to me. This feels amazing. Oh, I can feel it. Oh my God. It's almost like it's here. And you feel excited. You're revving yourself up, right? So like a snow globe, for example. The snow globe, when you get it at the store, you look at it, it has like all the, the quote, quote, snow at the bottom, right? It's all level. Nothing's really happening. So a lot of people, when they start to manifest, they'll be like, we're just going to call this my snow globe. This is my little, my little orgone pyramid thing. So like my little snow globe, it's like, imagine like all this stuff at the bottom was the snow. What I'm going to do is like, okay, I'm, I'm going to manifest this. Now you'll kick up a little bit of something. You might get a little bit of something, but it's not, there's nothing crazy going on, right? But if you were to shake your snow globe like this, this is what I'm going to manifest. Boom, 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 boom. What happens? All that snow is like moving around. It's going crazy. There's a whole bunch of energy being moved around in that snow globe. That's the same level of energy that's going to go into your manifestation. The highest form of energy is your emotion. Emotion. Energy in motion. You see what I'm saying? So when you shake it up and you're just like boom, 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 you're creating it. You're like, you're giving it all the sensory vi vividness. You can smell something. You can taste something. You can feel something in your hand. You can feel the expansiveness of wherever it is that you're at, whatever it is that you're trying to manifest. The, all the love that you're receiving from that love you're trying to attract into your life. Once you start to put all that emotion in and you start to like revisit this, but yeah, this is exactly what I'm boom, 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 boom. You're shaking up the snow globe with a vigor. Boom, 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 boom. But if you're just saying, oh, I pictured it and nothing's happening, that's because you're going like this. Did I manifest it yet? Did I manifest it yet? No, you need to put some energy into that. You need to put some emotion into it. But once again, don't get emotionally attached to things because all that energy goes into like swirls it up nice and even, right? Boom, boom, boom. And then eventually, how does the snow globe work? It shakes up and then eventually the things settle. So all of that energy that was put into it while it was swirling, it's like, that's what, was, what made it, right? So then, boom, once it comes down, that's when you start to see it precipitating into your life. When it starts to precipitate in your life, that's when you start seeing the signs. You go, wow, it looks like something is coming. Yes, because that, that means it's crystallizing into your world. When it crystallizes in your world, you start to see little signs of it. You start to see billboards, signs, license plates, people talking about it around you. Then in one way or another, when, when the dust settles, the snow settles, when your emotions settle and crystallize, boom, it compacts into the ground. The ground is you. The ground is your third dimensional reality. The ground is your physical screen of space. And once it compacts, boom, it's there. And you're like, wait, I got it. That's exactly what it was. You see what I'm saying? Um, the last little thing I'm going to give you 
So you got the emotion, you got the putting the right thing, putting all a whole bunch of different aspects into it. But the next one is, you know, understanding that you don't have, to, you can either be very specific or be very symbolic. I think the main thing here is that energy and motion, that emotion, right? You know, for example, relationships that I manifested. You know, I manifested a relationship when I was like in what, high school? Like, you know, like I was like, you know, I don't really care about girls, but it's like now I'm at the point, I kind of want a girlfriend now. So like, you know, I'm 16, never dated nobody. What's up? <laughs> so I used to like sit, like I used to lay on my floor on bored evenings and just daydream. You know, when you daydream, you've entered into that creative space, right? So when everything you see there and you put it with emotion, you feel like the, the, the thrill of being with that significant other, that's, that's the same thing you're doing. You know, a lot of people are manifesting without knowing it, you know, and what was interesting is like I really like gave myself a checklist of everything I was looking for. She do this, that, 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 blah, 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 blah. And strangely enough, I pretty much got exactly that. Even with the things I threw in threw in there with my young naivety, which was like, you know, a little bit of drama. Because no relationship could be good without a little bit of drama, right? Once again, don't judge me. That's just a little kid me, you know, 16-year-old me who thinks he knows where everything's going on in the world. You know what I'm saying? But I threw that in there. But guess what? That is exactly what I got. You see what I'm saying? And I think I got more than a little bit of drama, but that's why they say be careful what you ask for, you see? But you have to learn these things, right? Then the second relationship was more of the symbolic one. It wasn't very specific. It was like one of the things when I, I, when I knew I was moving, I imagined that the person I wanted was very close to me already, but I'm moving, so I'm going to see her following me. Instead of just saying, hey, she's already here in Denver, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to say, no, she has to, she has to follow me here. She's, I, saw, I saw like an airplane flying from from the east coast to denver you see what i'm saying and eventually that's exactly what happened you know i ended up my second relationship was someone from back home from virginia a childhood friend of mine and eventually blah blah, blah got got to together started a relationship and at a certain point she flew over to see me the same everything happens in your mind whether it be symbolic or whether it be very direct all the most important thing is you apply emotion to it don't get attached because when you get attached to something what is it like if a tick if a tick attaches itself to your wrist right now, right, what are you going to try to do? You're going to try to get it away from you. You're going to try to pull it away. That's why attachment is so bad because you're almost chasing your, um, uh, you're, you're chasing your manifestation away from you. You see what I'm saying? So it's not, you're not attaching, you're just fueling it with emotion. It's almost like a lasso, like your emotion, you'd be like, boom, I'm throwing it now, come into me, boom, there we go. Instead of being like, oh, oh my God, I want this now. I want this now. Come on, come on, go. And it's going to be like, whoa, chill. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, like it, bring it back to the dating world. You know, ladies, men, whatever. If you found someone that was way, way too into you real quick. Oh my God, you're amazing. Let's get married now. Yo, I'm pumping my gas. What are you talking? Yo, chill. Back up. That's exactly what you're doing with your manifestations. All right. So see something in your mind, whether it be extremely specific or you see something very, uh, very symbolically. But the thing is you charge it with your emotion, right? Once you charge it with your emotion, you're shaking up the snow globe and it's spinning around up there at the top. It's all crazy, crazy, crazy. Then eventually in its own time, that's another thing you can't be, that's why I say don't be attached because you're going, when is it happening? When is it happening? It will happen. Especially when you see a sign, when you see someone talking about the thing that you want without even being provoked about it, you know, that's when you know it's starting to come down. When you start to see the signs, that's, that's when you should be relaxing even more. The more you relax, the more natural it feels. The more natural it feels, the quicker it comes into your life, right? So that's how, that's pretty much how everything happens from your mind to the universe and back to your physical reality. I hope that made sense for y'all. I hope that helped y'all. To the next one.